Hello friends, welcome back to Wow IAS. Welcome to the discussion on daily MCQ. Today is 3rd of August 2021 and now we are going to discuss 5 current affair based MCQs. So let's start. But first let us discuss the question that was asked yesterday and yesterday's question was Who among the following has started the public works department in the year 1848? A. Lord William Bentick B. Lord Dalhousie C. Lord Wellesley and D. Lord Cornwallis and some of you have given the correct answer as well. It was Abzur Qureshi and Abhijit who gave the correct answer yesterday. And the correct answer for this question is B. Lord Dalhousie. Lord Dalhousie was the Governor General of India from 1848 to 1956. And during his tenure, he has started this Public Works Department. So if you see some other, uh, other achievements or some other, other things which are started by Lord Dalhousie, in, 19, in 1853, he has started the first railway line between Bombay and Thane. Okay, so this was also during the tenure of Lord Dalhousie. And also if you see in the year, yesterday we have discussed 1856, the Widow Remarriage Act was drafted by Lord Dalhousie. Okay, and also the first telegraph was also launched during his tenure. So you can say Lord Dalhousie and another important thing, Lord Dalhousie is famous for his Doctrine of Laps. This Doctrine of Laps was launched by Dalhousie. Okay, so these are the important things that, uh, that happened during the tenure of Lord Dalhousie. Okay, so now let's move on and guys uh, daily we upload five current affair based MCQs and the solutions in a PDF format. You can download this from our telegram channel and make use of this initiative for your prelims examination because as you know the current affairs are very important from the play for the prelims and the way questions are asked if you see they are not asked directly they derive or you can say they use the current affairs to frame a static kind of a question and that is what we are trying to do in this initiative. So make the best use of this. Okay. Now let's begin the first question. Consider the following statements with respect to the scheme for promotion of culture of science. First one, it provides for setting up of science cities and science centers in all the states of the country subject to availability of funds for the purpose. Second one, Niti Aayog is the implementing agency to set up science cities or centers and innovation hubs. So we have to choose the correct answer. A1 only, B2 only, C both 1 and 2 and D neither 1 nor 2. So if you see this uh, scheme for promotion of culture of sciences, so it provides for setting up of science cities and science centers in all of the states of the country subject to availability of funds. So the first statement is right. But second statement, if you see, this is a wrong statement because this is implemented by the National Council of Science Museum, but not the Niti Ayo. So that's why the second statement is wrong. The first statement is right. Yeah, one only is the correct answer. Recently, the National Council of Science Museums NCSM has developed a chain of science museums across the country including science cities through the scheme for promotion of culture of sciences and this is implemented by the National Council of Science Museum NCSM and not Niti Aayog so that's why okay this is the so this uh, NCSM is the right one and the state governments and union territories and the societies promoted by states for the purpose of science cities or science centers, they will be eligible for the financial assistance by the government. And it provides for setting up of science cities and science centers in all states of the country, which is subject to availability of funds. And science city, if you see, the science city is aimed to be popular tourist attraction of the location. It provides an experiment based immersive learning ambience to inculcate a spirit of inquiry, foster creative talent and create scientific temper in the community as a whole. And if you see also, it is characterized by its two pronged channels of communication, exhibits and activities. So these are the important things from Science City. And Science Center, if you see, the Science Center provides for provides the scope of doing science, adopting a hands-on approach for which it offers to the visitor a number of experimental options through which they can discover the science concept themselves. So as you know, the promotion of science is very much important for the development of the country. So the promotion of Science City and Science Center is done. Okay, now let's move on. The second question, consider the following statements with respect to e rupee. So yesterday this e rupee was launched by Prime Minister Modi. So that's why we have asked this question. First one, it is a cashless and contactless mode of digital payment medium, which will be delivered to the beneficiaries mobile phones in the form of an SMS string or a QR code. Second one, the payment system will be person specific and purpose specific system. Which of the following are correct? So if you see yesterday, as I told already, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has launched this e rupee scheme. Okay, and this e-rupee, if you see, it's a 
cashless and contactless mode of digital payment medium which will be delivered to the beneficiary's mobile phones directly and this will be either in the form of a QR code or an SMS string. So using these two, the beneficiary can directly pay to the relevant shopkeeper and the payment will be person specific and purpose specific as well. And here the correct answer will be C both 1 and 2. C both 1 and 2. So if you see eRupee, this was launched, it's an electronic voucher based digital payment system and it was launched yesterday and this voucher, this uh, eRupee if you see it's basically as I told already it's a QR code or it's a SMS string based. So they will be directly a purpose based. So for example, for example, let's take an example where the government want to give free mask to all the people. For the delivery of free mask, what the government will do is they will send a string, they will send an SMS which consists of a payment link, okay, which consists of a code. And this code, if the SMS link is directly shown to the shopkeeper, they, if they go to any medical shop and if they show to the shopkeeper, then the shopkeeper will give the mask directly to the people at free of cost. And then later on, the government will pay the money to the shopkeeper based on the string. Okay, so this is called as a e-rupee scheme and it is developed by the NPCI, the National Payment Corporation of India, the Department of Financial Services, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and National Health Authority. All of them combinedly developed this and the payment system will be person specific and purpose specific as I told already. So directly the beneficiaries will be targeted and it will be done for specific purpose only. This will be like a prepaid gift voucher that will be redeemable without any credit or debit card. So it does not need any credit or debit card, only a mobile app or internet banking at specific counters will be accepted. The system is built by NPCA on its UPI platform and has onboarded banks which will be issuing the entities and any corporate or government agency will approach the banks, okay, they will partner with them both private and private, both for the public and private sector as well. Okay, and the beneficiaries will be identified by their mobile numbers and a voucher will be allocated by a bank to the service provider. Okay, so these are this is the information about e rupee. So please make a note of this as this was launched recently. Okay, remember it is launched by NPCI and it is a SMS or QR code based where the beneficiaries will be targeted directly for a specific purpose. Now let's move on to the next question. The third question: the bronze statue of dancing child saint Sambandar belongs to A Chera dynasty, B Chola dynasty, C Pandya dynasty, and D Kushan dynasty. So here if you see the correct answer, the bronze statue of dancing child Saint Sambandar, it belongs to B. Chola dynasty. So the correct answer is B. Chola dynasty. So recently the National Gallery of Australia, they have announced that it would return 14 works of art from its Asian art collection to India. The works which are being returned are the dance child Saint Sambandar of 12th century belonging to Chola dynasty, the processional standard which is the alum from Hyderabad. The Arch for Jain Shrine, seated Jaina, 1163, from Mount Abu region, Rajasthan. The Divine Couple Lakshmi and Vishnu, Lakshmi Narayan, from 11th and 12th century. And the Durga Mahishasura Martini from Gujarat. So all of these things, all of these artworks will be returned to India. And Sambandar, if you see, it is also referred to as the Thiruvunana Sambandar, who was a Shiva poet, or you can say he was a Shaivite, saint of Tamil Nadu, who lived in around 7th century CE. And he was a contemporary of Appar, another Shaiva poet saint. He was a child prodigy who lived just 16 years. According to the Tamil Shaiva tradition, he composed about 1600, about 16,000 hymns in complex meter, of which 383 hymns with the 4,181 stanzas have survived. So less than less than half, or you can say only quarter of what he has written has survived today. And these na these narrate an intense devotion or bhakti towards Lord Shiva of this young man. And the surviving compositions of Sambandar are preserved in the first three volumes of Tirumurai and provide a philosophical foundation for Shaiva Siddhanta. Okay, so this is all the information about Sid of Sambandar. Remember, Sambandar belongs to Chola dynasty. Belongs to Chola dynasty. Now let's move on to the next question. The fourth question: Consider the following statements with respect to Controller General of Accounts (CGA). First one: The Office of Controller General of Accounts derives its mandate from Article 150 of the Indian Constitution. Second one, he is the principal accounting advisor to the government of India and works under the RBI. So which of the following are correct statements? A1 only, B2 only, C both 1 and 2 and D neither 1 nor 2. So if you see this uh, controller general of accounts, 
actually it is derives its mandate from article 150 of the constitution so first one is the right statement but second one if you see he is the principal accounting advisor to the government of india this is right but he does not work under rbi he works under the minister of finance so the first one is right and second one is wrong so a one only is the correct answer so recently shri deepak das took charge as the new controller general of accounts and it is the department of expenditure it is under the department of expenditure under the ministry of finance he is the principal accounting advisor to the government of india and he is responsible for establishing and maintaining a technically sound management accounting system so that's the important thing and he prepares this office prepares monthly and annual analysis of expenditure revenue borrowing and various fiscal indicators of the union government and the annual appropriation accounts and union finance accounts are to be submitted to the parliament under article 150 of the constitution and its goal is to provide reliable information that brings transparency in the use of in the use and reporting of public fund through an integrated government wide financial information system and it derives its mandate from article 150 of the constitution okay it's a statutory mandate as incorporated in the allegation of business rules 1961 and it brings out duties and responsibilities of cj as below so these are these duties and responsibilities you can just go through them once okay now let's move on to the next question the next question is contour bunding is a method of soil preservation used in it's a previous year csc question of 2013 a desert margins liable to strong wind action b low flat plains close to stream courses liable to flooding c scrumblands liable to spread of weed growth and d none of the above so contour bunding if you see this contour bunding is basically a soil conservation technique which is generally used in the slopes areas that is generally it is used in the hillsides so the correct answer here is d none of the above so contour bunding is one of the simple methods of soil and water conservation technique this technique is used in the places where the land is slopy and due to the slope generally what will happen when there is slope the soil and the nutrients they will flow down in order to in order to reduce this so a small kinds of contours they are being formed and it's a it's a kind of steps you can say okay so here this cultivation will be done and this will also lead to saving of soil you can say the soil erosion will be reduced it's a technique of agricultural fields contours are marked and then bunds are taken along the contours okay so this is all the information about contour bunding and now let's look at the question of the day the question of the day is the indian subcontinent was originally part of huge landmass called a indian b angarland c aryavarta and d gondwana land so do give your answer in the comment box and tomorrow we will discuss this question okay so and guys uh, these are our initiatives we have launched vision prelims test series summary vision pt 365 summary vision monthly magazine summary and vision mains test series summary as well these summaries will help in your revision and will increase the efficiency of of your revision because as you know for the exam revision plays a very important role it's not how much you read it's about how well you have read and for that revision plays a very key role so do make the best use of this initiative as this is to make your preparation very easy okay guys uh, then that's it from my side i'll see you again tomorrow with five more mcqs till then keep studying and stay tuned jai hind